In this video, I'm going to go over how I've been using Gulp to speed up Jekyll. So I wrote a little blog post about this. And when I started, I was using, uh, I was before Jekyll 3.5.2, which had some speed improvements. It used to take me 15 seconds every time Jekyll generated my site. Just that upgrade to Jekyll 3.5.2 decreased that down to 6 seconds. Uh, right about when I did that, I also started using Hugo. And Hugo is a very, very fast static site compiler. It was pretty impressive, you know, it basically instantly compiles your site. And then when I went back and started using Jekyll again, it was, you know, six seconds just seems like an eternity when you're used to things being instantly. One of the things that I learned from using Hugo is Hugo doesn't actually do SAS processing. So you had to use Gulp to get SAS to compile. And when I thought about it, why not, you know, why not use that same Gulp workflow with Jekyll? Just because Jekyll can process SAS doesn't mean that it's necessarily faster than Gulp or that it's the best way to do it. It's certainly simple because it works out of the box. But it turns out if you use Gulp to do that and free up Jekyll from doing that, Gulp will compile your SAS basically instantly. So if you're doing live reloading of your website while you're working on the CSS, it basically refreshes in less than a second. And it's, it's awesome to be able to see that. And at the same time, by removing the SAS processing out of Jekyll, the rest of Jekyll runs faster. So if you go to switch and start doing HTML you're, or some markdown files, those compile faster because you're not waiting for SAS to compile every time. And that was sort of a big learning experience from using Hugo is that why is Jekyll doing all these other things when it really all I wanted to do is convert the markdown into HTML and to run everything through a layout and add in the includes wherever I want. That's all I really want Jekyll to do. So I started playing around with that and I ended up doing all of those things. I no longer need to use Jekyll to do the SAS. I don't have it watch the images folder. I don't have it watch the JavaScript that I use. I don't use a whole lot of JavaScript, so there wasn't a whole lot going on there, but I do have some. I eliminated all of that and that was something that Hugo did that I thought was very clever. It's, it's much quicker to have something else take care of those things and then just focus the Jekyll part on converting the markdown files and, and doing the includes and the layout files. So here is the Gulp file I ended up with. Uh, I'll go over it and then we'll build the site and, and see what all can happen. Another advantage of doing the Gulp is that I also got source maps. I've never used source maps before. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I, I've used it a couple of times. Fortunately, mo I'm pretty happy with my CSS as it currently is, so I'm not in much of a CSS development mode. Uh, but the source maps is certainly going to make that easier when I get there. Uh, kind of like the, uh, it's going to kind of be like the browser sync live reloading the page. That you know, boy, there's so much. It's so much faster if you don't have to sit there and and refresh the page. It automatically refreshes for you. That that is such a cool thing. So let's go through this really quick. It's a little bit easier to read on this on this web page than it is inside Sublime. Uh, it's sort of in here in in backwards. If we start further down towards the bottom. This is what's really going on. Uh, this is sort of where it begins. Watch Jekyll source files for change changes. Don't watch assets. So I, I've I've changed my assets folder from just assets to underscore assets. Jekyll by default will ignore anything that starts with an underscore. So Jekyll by default is ignoring this folder and then I have Gulp handle that. It does end up inside the site folder as an assets folder and when Jekyll runs and builds a site every time it's going to wipe out everything in here. So I have keep files and in there I have the folder named assets. So Jekyll is no longer wiping out this assets folder every time I run Jekyll build through Gulp. That's very important. And like I said, it's excluded automatically from anything happening to it because it starts with an underscore up here. And here I have assets under exclude, but I'm pretty sure I don't need that. I think that was when I was just playing around with it, getting it going. Um, so inside of this assets folder is all of the stuff that I want Gulp to do. It's going to move the images over into the assets slash images folder. It's going to move the JavaScript over and it's going to uglify it, minimi minify it. And then the SAS, I want it to compile all the SAS into site.css and then put that inside of assets, CSS, site.css. I also want it to make the source map. And so we'll go back over here. 
So we've got a bunch of watch tasks, and they're sort of broken apart because they can't be all... They're going to do different things based on what it's watching. The first watch here is to watch... This is for Jekyll, is in this little exclamation mark here is to ignore the site folder. So here I'm telling it, watch everything in the root. Watch everything except ignore the site folder, ignore underscore assets, ignore node modules, ignore SAS cache, and then anything in there. If you see anything in this that's not in one of these, go ahead and run Jekyll build, and that'll build the Jekyll site. It's not going to do anything if I change any of the SAS or the JavaScript or the images. It's just going to be looking basically for the HTML and the markdown files, but uh, also some other stuff. It's also going to watch the config file. I'm not telling it not to watch the config file. And if you just use regular Jekyll serve or Jekyll build, if you change, well, I guess it would be Jekyll serve, if you change something in the config file, you have to stop and go back and tell it to redo it because it's not watching the config file. Here I am watching the config file. So if I make a, if I make a change to the config file, it just it runs Jekyll build just like anything any other change would. Underneath that, we're watching the SAS files. And so if anything in the underscore assets slash SAS changes, then I do a SAS rebuild, uh, which if you go down here, here's SAS rebuild. I'm not a gulp expert by any means. I sort of cobbled this together from a few other gulp files that I found on the internet and just sort of practicing around with it. Uh, when I build the SAS, I also have auto prefixer, so I can automatically add the prefixes to anything that needs it. Uh, and then I also can tell it, it's also telling it to do the source maps, and then it's telling it where to copy it when you're done doing everything. Destination, underscore, site, assets, CSS. Uh, and then at the end, you know, at the end of basically all the watches, you're telling browser sync to reload. So we've got that for SAS. Then the watch for JS is is pretty simple. All I'm doing is uglifying it. So you watch the at underscore assets slash JS. Any file in there that ends in JS, uglify it, copy it into site assets slash JS. Again, reload browser sync. Uh, and then there's watch images. Basically, all it's doing is copying anything from underscore assets image to site assets image and then reloading browser sync. So in order to get this gulp file to work, and then there's some other stuff in here. You basically need all of these things installed, and that's via NPM. So if you go back and look at my main repo here, uh, you'll see there's my gulp file. And then I have a package JSON file. If you have the gulp file and the package JSON file, and then you're going to start using this, you would run npm install, and it would go through and install all of these things for you. I think a couple of them that are in there, I'm not using. I'm not using as a part of the basic gulp command. One of them is an uh, W3 site validator HTML hint, and then also image min. Uh, I haven't added that into my workflow just yet. It's in here. If I want to run it manually, I can. I'm pretty good at only putting in images that I've already optimized in Photoshop. Every once in a while, I run this on my source. I don't feel any need to run it constantly. It sort of seems silly. I'm not, I'm not that often adding images into it. So let's uh, go ahead and fire this up. I'll right-click on here and do Open Run. I already have one window open in here. I'll close it. And all I need to do is type in gulp. It does take a couple of seconds the first time to get going. This seems actually pretty quick. And there you can see it opened up the browser. And let's see, try and get this all to fit. And let's see. So the, the coolest thing about this workflow certainly is working with CSS is drastically faster. So if I go find, I'm going to go find this, uh, this is the block quote. Let's see, close that. I already have it open over here. Block quote dash info, background color, uh, whatever that is, that pale blue. I'm just going to change that to red. Press control S and boom, instantly it changed it. Now if I undo it, control Z, press control S again. And it's, I mean, it's, it's lightning fast the way it, 
it does it. If I, if I was using Jekyll to process the SAS, that would have took six seconds every time that I did that because it would have wiped out the entire site folder and regenerated everything. By doing it with Gulp, all I'm, Gulp is just watching the SAS. It doesn't have to do anything else other than focus on that one task of compiling the SAS. So that's just a, that's an easy example of using, of editing uh, one of my SCSS files and having it compile fast. Now let's look at source maps. I've never used source maps. I haven't really used source maps that much before. I've only used it a couple of times, just sort of playing around with it, see what it is. So the source maps make it so that in the Chrome inspector, which is generally what I'm using anyways to figure out how to get the CSS to do what I want, and then I copy it from over here into one of the SAS files. If I go do this same thing, block quote info, bring it up over here, now there's a new thing over here with the source maps. It knows which SAS file, which partial that that CS is in, and if I click on it, now this is the actual partial file that I have open here. It's the same thing, and I can edit it directly here. Uh, background color. And now when I press Control Save here, it just saved it on the file system. I don't even have to copy it anywhere. It has physically changed this line. That color is the same color as this one here. It physically changed it, and the source map allows you to do that. If I didn't have that, I'd have to know where this was in the SAS partials and have it open in here, copy it from you know whatever I liked in the other tab, and paste it into here and then save it. So you can see here, if I press Control Z and then Control S, now I'm back to where I was. So the source map seems super cool. I, like I said, I'm more or less happy with my CSS, so I don't have a big need for it any, at the moment, but I'm sure I will in the future. And to have that built in, that's just another advantage of what I'm getting from the Gulp workflow. And then likewise, so here's my config file. If I change something in here, this little bit message title is this message title right here. I just made a small edit to it just so I can change it. Press Control S and now it updated there automatically. That took a little longer than the SAS changes did. It does take a little bit longer to compile. It said it took three quarters of a second, I guess. That's still pretty quick. Uh, I'll go back here and undo it. That's a little more than three quarters of a second because it's doing it. Then it has to run some other stuff, I guess. But still, compared to six seconds, that's pretty amazing. So in my main repository, again, inside this site folder, this assets folder, I can delete it. Although when I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. We'll close this. Yes. Uh, make sure I'm inside the site folder because that's the one that's being copied. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the assets. There it's gone. This is the source. And when I fire this back up, gulp, there's going to be a little del a delay in loading the images. More than likely when it first comes up, the thumbnails are going to be missing. And that's because the site's building and the browser sync is loading it into the browser before those images have been copied. If I refresh the page, now they're all there and everything's back to normal. Okay, and then there's one more thing. Uh, the, the little W3 validator thing is pretty interesting. I haven't built that into my workflow yet, uh, but I'll see if I can break something uh, and see if I can get it to work. So I have this still watching everything. Uh, what's something it doesn't like? Um, it doesn't like it when there's no alt tag on an image, so I'm just going to delete this. Save it. Uh, um, and that should have been this image. If I go look at this, there should be no alt tag. Yep, there's no alt tag. Now, if I go back, I'm going to open up another command prompt. Uh, and if I go back to the gulp file, down at the bottom, I have a little comment validate. Validate from the command line instead of running through Gulp because it works better. Uh, and this is the command. 
So I'm going to copy that, paste it into here. And so it's just running the command HTML hint on the site folder on anything that ends in HTML. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, so it didn't like my missing alt tag. For some reason, it dings me all the time on their website if I run something through there. Maybe because it's built in, maybe because it's inside of a, an A tag. So I remove the closing H1, and now you can see if I run it, tells me there's an error on index HTML and it's saying tag must be paired missing closing h1 I think that's pretty neat uh, I don't again I don't have it built into the the basic gulp command but something I can run once in a while just to try and catch things better fix that before I forget so now I fix it if I run it again it should come back as clear so that's it. I'll link to this blog post if you want to try this. Again, you need the this whole gulp file, and then this is the and then this is the package.json file, and you would run npm install to install all of these.